Hello friends, Buena Sera. This is Jada. No, actually this is Susie Perez with BinMaps. And the title of our video tonight is a penchant for Prosecco. But I do have to say a salute to Giada de Laurentiis because way back in the day when I would be watching Everyday Italian and I love cooking shows, uh, Giada would always sort of weave in with the fun bellini, the mimosa or some other um, concoction, uh, bringing in Prosecco. And I thought that was really cool. And that's actually the way that I was first introduced to Prosecco. So thank you, Giada. So Prosecco is extremely popular in Italy itself, and of course, worldwide, in the UK, the United States, even in Japan, you can find lovers of Prosecco. So what are we gonna be covering in this particular episode? We'll talk about, of course, what is Prosecco, where it's from, how it's made, with which grapes it's made with, and then we're gonna be asking the question, what the heck happened with Prosecco in 2009? And we'll also be tasting these beautiful wines. Um, from left to right, we have the Pisogeo Prosecco Brut NV. We have Nino Franco Rustico Prosecco Superiore. And then we have finally Le Couture Prosecco Superiore di Cartice. And I'm really looking forward to trying these. I haven't tried any of these, so very exciting. Okay, so let's dive right in. What is Prosecco? Prosecco is a white wine, primarily sparkling. It's fragrant, it has aromas usually of peach, pear, melon, honeysuckle, even green apple, and sometimes a hint of rose, depending on who's producing it. There are different styles of Prosecco. There's Spumante, Frisante, and Tranquillo. Spumante has the most bubbles, Frisante level lower than that, and then Tranquillo, of course, uncarbonated. There's also styles in terms of how sweet. So these go from, with the DOCG, Cunigliano Vado Biadene DOCG at least, um, their type is going to be extra brute, brute, dry, and extra dry. And extra dry meaning most residual sugar. So where is Prosecco produced? At a 30,000 foot level, Prosecco is produced northeast of Italy in Veneto and the Friuli Venezia Giulia region to the east. It is actually an inter-regional thing happening here with Prosecco, um, which sometimes happens in Italy. That's pretty cool. So basically you have this region that extends more or less from the lagoon of Venice to the south and then along the plains and then to the foothills of the Prealps. So there's quite a um, gradation of different things happening there. Okay, so Venice was a powerful maritime republic for a thousand years, and the Veneto region itself is actually the most productive of Italy's wine regions, with 25% of its wines at a DOC and DOCG level. So that's pretty cool. Um, so now let's talk about the grapes involved in the Prosecco. Prosecco is made primarily from Gleda. In fact, it must be made with at least 85% of the Gleda grape, which is a, very, is a straw colored, light straw colored grape. 15% of other varieties can be also used, but many producers stick to just Gleda, 100%. Another way to, to describe Prosecco is it's a white Denominazione di origine controllata, DOC, or Denominazione di origine controllata e garantita, DOCG, wine made from at least 85% of the Gleda grape. And when you get into the world of Prosecco, there's just kind of no way that you can't talk about Italy's DOC, Controlled Designation of Origin System. It just has, it comes up left and right. So we're just gonna dive into it a little bit. The DOC system, Control Designation of Origin system, was launched in 1963. And this basically sets different levels of controls for the types of wines and where they're produced, how much yield the, the grapes harvested, alcohol level, so on and so forth. The DOCG level actually has for instance, there's a committee 
that has to guarantee its geographical authenticity. And so they actually have these tests that they do for that. So there's a lot involved in the making of these wines, not just Prosecco, but any Italian wine at this level. So how is Prosecco made? Prosecco is made in the Marinotti or Charmat method, whereby after sugar and yeast are added in large closed pressurized tanks or vats, then the fermentation um, traps the CO2, which is a byproduct of the fermentation process. And then this happens for about a month or it can ferment for up to nine months. Okay, so what happened in 2009? And with this, I'm going to open our first wine. And actually you want to serve these cold. And so these are already probably getting a little warmer than I'd like, but we're gonna open up this guy first. Viso Geo. Okay, so we're back with this beautiful Viso Geo fruit. And um, it's, there's a party going on in there. It's just beautiful. Look at those bubbles and it's that straw gold color. Hmm. I'm actually getting a tiny hint of almond in there. And the sweetness of is more from a slight peach and pear. And it's just beautiful. And it tastes just completely so well balanced. You just want to drink the whole thing in one sitting, which I cannot do right now because I'm doing a video. <laughs> Okay, so what the heck happened in 2009 with Prosecco? I'm going to bring this up now because this is a DOC level wine right here, even though Viso Geo do make DOCG level wines as well. So basically prior to 2009, the Conigliano Valdoviadene DOC, that by the way, which had been in existence since 1969, uh, that and several IGTs, these all made Prosecco. Uh, these were, and a solo DOC, these were all brought up in status. So the IGTs that were making Prosecco in the area, those were brought up to DOC and they were united and called Prosecco DOC. The Cuniliano Valdebiadene DOC was brought up to DOCG level, as was the solo. Um, Prosecco DOC and this was done because they were there was some fear among producers that Prosecco the Prosecco name was um, in trouble in jeopardy and they wanted to protect it and so they chose the Gleda grape which is a Friulan synonym for Prosecco and that was the grape that was uh, what they decided to do so Prosecco is actually not allowed to be made outside of these areas, at least not according to the Italian government. Um, so if you're using Glada to make a wine outside of the Prosecco DOC and the various DOCGs there, um, you have to, you cannot put Prosecco on the label, basically. So it protects the Prosecco name. And the Prosecco DOC, by the way, is, is 30,000 acres in size. Next, we're going to get into our Nino Franco Rustico Prosecco Superiore and talk a little bit about the beautiful Cuniliano Valdobbiadene uh, DOCG region. Okay, so before I taste this, I wanted to just show you, because I forgot in the last one, to show you that there is this DOCG label here, and it looks gold, and Nino Franco Rustico Prosecco Superiore. See the Valdo Biadene on the label there. So those are all important things. Normally I like to stand up when I open these. So I'm opening the cage, but I'm not taking it off as you can see. And really you're supposed to move the bottle not the top, not the cork. So I'm just gently 
moving the bottle to the right. And then, then you'll listen for the beautiful pop. Woo! <laughs> now that's a party. Okay. And then we will pour the beautiful Nino Franco Rustico. I like to pour it at a little bit of an angle. I'm going to pour a little more just because it's so pretty. Might have to share this with my husband a little later. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Beautiful. Now again, look at these beautiful bubbles. I'm not used to seeing... Well, of course, they're sort of magnified depending, but it's just amazing. Just fine, beautiful. And this one seems a little bit lighter color to me for some reason. Swirl it a little bit. Take a good sniff. Since so much is through the olfactory. Hmm. Definitely some uh, light pear. Maybe a little melon there. Hmm. That was really nice. Very smooth and not too sweet. That's what I like about these. They're you've got just enough sweetness, but it's not overpowering and definitely not going to give you a headache, put it that way. So when I'm tasting this, I'm moving over, I'm traveling to the verdant hills of the Venetian pre-alps, which is where this is made. So in the Cunigliano Valdebiadene DOCG area, the hills are east-west in orientation. So you have a south facing um, aspect, which is ideal for these grapes. Elevations here range from 160 to 1600 feet, and they can actually have steep slopes of 70% gradient which also makes me think of Germany where there's so much of the wines, uh, the vineyards there are on very steep slopes in some cases. Uh, the Alps here protect the area from the cold, cold air. And that also is, is wonderful though that there, there is that coldness in, with the elevation because you get that diurnal shift, which is so important for grape acidity and developing complexity of the grapes during the growing season. So that's going on. And then you have on top of that warm breezes from the Venice Lagoon, uh, 25 miles more or less due south or slightly southeast, uh, which moderates, these warm breezes moderate everything uh, during the cold winter. So it's a pretty ideal area. Soils are diverse, but are uh, composed of sandstone, sandstone, marl, and clay with a mixture alternating with alluvial and glacial moraine deposit. And finally for today, we have the beautiful Le Culture Prosecco Superiore di Cartice. And the thing you need to know about this is that the subzone of Cartice, the subzone of Cartice within the DOCG overall area is a hill in the Vallo Biadene. Wines like this one are considerably more expensive than other Proseccos and the acreage here is 264. So these are the highest in the Prosecco uh, pyramid of quality. And so we'll open this one up and I'm moving the bottle. I'm not moving my hand. My left hand. This one is... Uh-oh. Hmm, we had a little trouble with this one. Okay, so I actually have never had that happen before. The cork just um, 
broke from the top. So I had to very carefully, I actually don't recommend doing it, <laughs> I had to very carefully open this um, the way you're not supposed to <laughs> with the corkscrew. Uh, but we got it out, so that's, that's good. So this uh, again from the um, subzone of Cartese, a hill in Valdoviadene, uh, GOCG area. But this wine is considered the top of the Prosecco pyramid. Hmm, fine mousse. Hmm, the cork was broken, but it didn't seem to affect the quality of the uh, Prosecco. It's gorgeous, and there's that fine mousse. Hmm, delicious. <clears throat> these are uh, these grapes, and then the ones um, that we tasted from the DOCG, um, Corneliano Valdebiada and DOCG. The grapes here are actually hand harvested. Machinery can't make it to the the steep gradients, and so these are hand harvested grapes. Pretty cool. These are also south facing hills, and there's a mixture of. I don't know, beautiful mesoclimates and so forth going on. So physical location, elevation aspect, and soils terroir um, conspire to make a wonderful uh, situation for the glada. And then the wine producer, they do their thing, and this is the beautiful result. So thank you, Cartice region and Le Culture. This is lovely. I highly recommend. In closing, I hope you've enjoyed this brief exploration of Italy's beautiful Prosecco wines. There's so much more to learn about Prosecco, and this is, again, the tip of the iceberg. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, please subscribe to our VinMaps channel. I would love it if you would. And join me again next time. For now, this is Susie Perez saying chin chin, a la vostra salute, to your health.